Hey, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is about violence and bad thoughts related to medications, nutrients, and lactic acidosis. So, if you're watching me for the first time, I need you to go back to some older videos where I talk about lactic acidosis. It's the most common mechanism of chronic disease. And one of the factors in it is the death of cells. And if it happens in the brain, the brain cells are dying, you go crashing down into violent thoughts. I've had people talk about violent sexual thoughts, grief, worry, doubt, fear, anxiety. And I think, I think that most of psychiatry is drugging the symptoms of lactic acidosis. And of course, fibromyalgia drugs, um, and I think pain, a lot of pain medications uh, are treating, and people use alcohol, uh, tobacco, um, there's heroin use, addiction is lactic acidosis, and all these drugs, they make people feel better temporarily, but in the long run, they make the problem worse. And I did a one hour video on lactic acidosis in 2016, it's on my YouTube channel, and I run through a list of medications, dozens and dozens of medications that cause lactic acidosis. And so when I figured out lactic acidosis in March of 2016, Everything in healthcare suddenly made sense, and I've been in healthcare now since I graduated in 1998. And um, a lot of questions and a lot of stories all sort of came together and made sense. I got my questions answered. And um, so I'm going to share with you some stories that didn't make sense. And now that I know about lactic acidos acidosis, now they do make sense. So first of all, my story, February 3rd, 2016, I was laying in bed. I'd been suffering for four months of, with chest pain, um, getting worse and worse very quickly. But on that night, I had chest pain. My blood pressure was 155 over 95. My pulse was racing. I was anxious. I was scrolling through my phone trying to figure out which hospital I should go to. Should I call an ambulance? I hope it doesn't snow because I can't use a snowblower. And, I, and I, who's going to mow my lawn in the summer? Like all these thoughts that weren't my thoughts. And I never went to the hospital because I knew the doctors wouldn't find the cause. Now, the degree of severity of my symptoms, my pain, my palpitations, my anxiety, was a four out of 10. If it was an eight, yeah, I probably would have gone to the hospital. But what happened was I got up in the morning and I don't remember if it was that day or, or next day, I found some notes that talked about some supplements that help with the heart. Now, the supplements did not treat the cause but I started taking them and two days later I felt better and I knew I was on the right track. It took nine more months for me to find the mold, the black mold that was in my heart causing the symptoms. Now, the supplements I took were for lactic acidosis, the mechanism of chronic disease, and I would just want to repeat, it's the mechanism, it's not the cause. So there are several things to treat when you're ill, chronically ill, you got to treat the mechanism and the cause and treat the clinical symptoms, picture, organs, all one and the same. You got to treat the clinical picture also. So you're really treating three things. So, but now the odd thing here, which I've never told anybody, but I'm telling you for the first time, February 4th, the very next night, I slept on the couch, not in my bed. And here's why. Here's my thinking at the time. The dangerous unpleasant night occurred in my bed. I don't want to repeat it, so therefore I'm not going to sleep in my bed. I'll sleep on the couch. So, and I knew it wasn't logical, and I, but I'm thinking it. And when you're in the depths of lactic acidosis and you got the chest pain and you're, you're ill and you're thinking you might die and, and you have all these anxious thoughts, you don't have logical thinking. So I slept on the couch that night, and then after that I've been fine sleeping on the bed, but I just had that one weird, odd behavior, odd thought. And uh, so then the next month is when I figured out lactic acidosis, and I started putting the pieces together of other patients I've had over the years, other experiences I've had, where people behave oddly, but they also had physical symptoms related to lactic acidosis. So let me run through some of these. In the late 90s, I visited a special school where uh, children went um, all the way up through sixth grade, I believe, and they all had behavior problems, they all acted out. And I was walking with the principal through the hallway, 
on this day. And he said, it's very quiet today. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, I don't know. Then they served lunch. And it was in a styrofoam box shipped from the other side of town. It was corn dogs and it was this bad lettuce and um, apple juice. And um, the fights broke out. And the tears started coming down the eyes. And there was two police officers on staff every day. And they became, became really busy breaking up fights and sending kids out in the hallway. And you stand in that corner. And I told the principal, it's the food. That's so obvious because you said it was quiet. And I recommended they get a new supplier of food. I also noticed they had two pop machines. And I told them, I told them you got to unplug the pop machines and get them out of the building. And he said, look, I probably won't be here next year. So there's nothing really I can do about this. So he never took action on improving the diet of these kids that already were, they were already sick, if you will. They were already, uh, their body was already compromised and therefore their brain and behavior was already compromised. Okay, um, I, went, I had three guys, uh, uh, two of them in their 20s, and they had chest pain. Um, and I asked both of them, how long have you had chest pain for? And they both said, 10 years. So the one guy was like 20, 24. So that means he's had chest pain since the age of 14. The other guy was like 26. So how can a teenager ch have chest pain? It's because they both grew up on sugar. And I asked them that directly, and they admitted they grew up on sugar. Sugar causes lactic acidosis, chest pain, heart disease. These guys were 14 and 16 years old when they first started feeling the symptoms of heart disease. So our culture is flooded with sugar. Our schools are flooded with sugar, and it needs to be reversed. The, the third guy also um, had a heroin addiction, and he was using that drug to ease the pain of his chest pain and the anxiety that came with it came with lactic acidosis. And I asked him, after a few months of being with me, he felt so much better. His apocalyptic thinking was gone. And I said, were you using the heroin? And he had been clean like 13 years. I said, were you using the heroin to ease the pain, but over time it just made it worse? And he said, yes. And then I realized that's true for a lot of medications. That's true for um, the, the medications I listed at the beginning of this video. Okay, the next one is about a woman, a doctor, who sat next to me at lunch after, <clears throat> after I gave a lecture on lactic acidosis to a group of doctors, and this is in 2016, and she talked about her husband. So he had the chest pain, he was suffering from heart disease, lactic acidosis, and um, he had a weird behavior. This is what he did. He sold their house. And he bought two condos in the same town, right down the street from each other. He would sleep in one condo one night, and then he'd sleep in the other condo the next night. And he kept switching back and forth. And I told her, he's doing, he's got lactic acidosis. He's afraid to be in a certain location because bad things happen in that location. The bad things are right here, inside the body. And this is sort of like agoraphobia. People don't want to leave the house because something bad might happen. People are afraid to drive because they may have a panic attack or an anxiety attack while driving. The danger comes with you wherever you go and you have a constant stream of fearful thoughts or um, apocalyptic thoughts or bad thoughts. It's, it's always with you and you, people do these weird things to um, alleviate or try to figure out or try to mitigate the danger that they carry inside their body. Their, their impending death, their impending doom is with them all the time. So they do, they do these odd things. Okay, I have a 12, or I, I never saw him as a patient, but his mom was telling me about this 12-year-old kid. And um, he, was, uh, he was really poorly behaved in school. He would run away from school run away from the house, the police would pick him up and they'd send him to the psychiatric hospital. He was always in trouble with the law and he's 12 years old. And um, he kept threatening to kill people. He wanted to kill people, he would say it. And so I asked the mom, does he ever go like this? And uh, she said, yes. And I said, he's got chest pain. That's lactic acidosis. And now she knew about lactic acidosis because she had it, I helped her with that. Her husband had it, 
he would drive himself to the hospital thinking he had heart attacks, but it never came out positive. And they said, your son's got it, and it's affecting his brain. He's dying on the inside, and he wants to take other people with him. And, this, and then she said to me that one day the psychiatric hospital called her up and said, okay, your son says he still wants to kill you, but I think we have his psychiatric medications correct now. So um, there's another, that's just another story that exemplifies how people can be really sick and their brain is sick and they go downhill and sometimes they want to take people with them. Sometimes they want to go hiding in their bedroom and they never want to come out. Sometimes they want to go to a different location. They just want to leave and go to a different location. And that's also a generalized um, anxiety disorder. You're in a party with a bunch of people and you suddenly need to leave. It's because you can't breathe. You're deficient in oxygen. And if, you, if, you, if you're not following what I'm saying, you got to see my other videos on lactic acidosis and what it is. And then there's a guy by the last name of Cruz uh, a few years ago. He murdered like three people. And this is his uh, text that he sent to his girlfriend. Basically, he's saying he's dying on the inside. And he's going to take other people with him. So here's the text right here. But he's got the same thing. When you, if you see a picture of him, if you search him out online, he's got bad skin. He's unhealthy, very unhealthy. Okay. So, psychiatric drugs cause homicide and suicide. Now, this is a special classification of medications. There are other medications that cause lactic acidosis. There's dozens and dozens, probably over a hundred. Um, but psychiatric drugs are, are more special. And it's because they destroy the neurons. Now, just like lactic acidosis can destroy the neurons in your brain from uh, cell starvation due to lack of oxygen and too much waste. The psych drugs themselves kill the neurons. And um, it's basically a flow of serotonin going this way. And the drugs are uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So what that means is the serotonin needs to go back up, back to the origin. But this reuptake is inhibited. So now you have a constant supply of serotonin activating this nerve right here. This damages the nerve over time. It may take months or a year or more than, more than a year. And that's why psychiatric drugs help people initially, but after six months or a year, they need something else. They need a Bilify. They need some other medication in the same category. Now, serotonin syndrome is when this um, neuron right here floods this synapse area with serotonin, lots of serotonin being pushed this way. So then the person becomes really rigid. Their muscles get really tight. They get agitated on the inside. This is the moment when they want to kill themselves. And this is the moment when they want to kill other people. If it gets worse, they go into a coma and then they go to the hospital and uh, they need to, their life saved at that time. But there's like, before that, before they have such a severe case of serotonin syndrome, they have what you, you might call subclinical, where they just feel bad on the inside. And um, the term akathisia means inward trembling. And that happens in serotonin syndrome. That's when people want to use a gun. So there's a lot of um, stories in the United States where kids shoot up their high school, kill a bunch of people. All those kids are on psychiatric medications. And um, so this needs a, we can do better. We can do a lot better. And it's up to you. It's not going to be the medical profession changing the way that they act unless you force it on them. You can do it one of two ways. You can just remove yourself from their system and really work hard on improving your health. Or you can put enough pressure on your MD and, he, and then he or she caves and then... Um, does the natural route, but I've never really seen that happen. So um, I wanted to say this just because we had a, a bad, uh, <clears throat> a bad um, mass murder happen in Las Vegas, and now is the time to talk about this. So um, we do have solutions. We know the cause of when people act crazy, and the guy that shot up and killed over fifty people in Las Vegas. His brother said he's got no political affiliations. He's got no religious affiliations. Um, he spoke with his mom about his mom because he bought something for his mom a few weeks earlier. He was a multimillionaire. 
and um, he was retired in Vegas having fun. But what made him snap? Nobody knows at this point. Okay, and I'm not saying I know either. Okay, but maybe he was on some medications that caused him to be agitated, serotonin syndrome. Maybe he's on some medications that caused him to start dying on the inside. We don't know. Nobody knows. But I wanted to share with you a whole bunch of stories in my career that makes me realize how dangerous drugs are, how important it is to fix lactic acidosis and the cause of it so that you actually you know, nourish your body and get better so that you don't have um, bad thoughts or violent thoughts. And, you, and then if you don't have them, then they're, then they're impossible to act out because they're not even there. All right, if you like it, it's a heavy, it's a heavy subject. But if you like this information, please give me a thumbs up. If it helps you understand yourself or somebody else, please give me a thumbs up. And I really appreciate your comments. All right, thank you.